Before you really start to understand the ins and outs of the elements on the periodic table, things like atomic mass and atomic weight, what family these elements are in, whether or not they tend to gain or lose electrons, the most important thing to realize first is you have to get familiar with some of the names and symbols. Now, some of the names and symbols are logical. It seems to match up, so for example, like hydrogen is H, lithium is Li, carbon is C, nitrogen is N. But then you run into some strange things on the periodic table as well. Like, how come sodium has the symbol Na? How come potassium has the symbol K? And then how come silver has AG and gold has AU and so on and so forth? So that's what I'm here to explain. I'm going to go into a lesson called Elements Etymology, which is basically the names and the origins of these symbols of the elements on the periodic table. Now, I won't go into every single detail and history behind every single element. Some of them are pretty straightforward, like I was explaining before. But the point of this lesson is to give you some history, some origins, and maybe some folklore behind some of the elements I find more interesting on the periodic table. Let's get right into it. Most of the names on the periodic table are derived from Greek and Latin roots. So take hydrogen, for example. Hydrogen has the root hydro, which means water, and then gen, which means generation or genesis or birth. So when you put the two roots together, you literally get the birth of water. And guess what's found in water? H, H2O. Helium was named in honor of the Greek god of the sun, Helios. It was thought that Helios drove a magic chariot drawn by fire horses, and he was responsible for allowing the sun to rise and to set by pulling the sun with him and his magic chariot. Helium also, by the way, makes up 25% of the sun's mass. Li is lithium, which is a main component in many of today's batteries. The word lithium is derived from the Greek root lithos, which translates to stone. Many of lithium's ores are found in stones and rocks. The symbol for sodium is Na, which is derived from the Latin root natrium, which means salt. There's a disorder called hyponatremia, which is low concentration of salt in your system leading to muscle weakness and fatigue. The symbol for potassium is K, which is derived from the Arabic kalium or kalium, which translates to alkaline or slippery. Chlorine has the symbol Cl, which is derived from the Greek root chloros, meaning green. Chlorine is a green gas that was used in World War I as a chemical weapon. Iodine is known for its purple and violet colored fumes and vapors. Not getting enough iodine in your diet results in a disorder in your thyroid. Your thyroid is located in your neck region, and it produces hormones that are really important for your growth and your health overall. Luckily, nowadays, we have iodized salt, which provides enough of this nutrient in your diet. Iron, strangely enough, is Fe. The symbol is Fe, and it's derived from the Latin word ferrum, which means sword. Swords in ancient times were forged from iron. Here's a fun fact about nickel allergies. Some people who are allergic to nickel might also be allergic to peanuts. That's because peanuts are grown in soil, which has low concentrations or low contents of nickel. Tungsten is randomly W, because it's derived from the Nordic word wolfram, which means heavy stone or heavy metal. Tungsten is also used in light bulb filaments, and how I remember it is it kind of looks like a W if you look at the filament carefully enough. That's the shape of it, a W, tungsten. The men who worked the silver mine shafts would run across a toxic metal called cobalt in their search for silver. They called it cobalt, or cobold, which means gremlin. They believe these gremlins came in, stole the silver, and replaced it with a less valuable and more toxic metal called cobalt. The symbol for silver is AG, which is derived from the Latin argentum, which translates to silver. The country of Argentina literally translates to the land of silver, and they call their river the Rio de la Plata because they believe that river used to house a lot of silver. Argeria is a really similar sounding word to argentum, again, which means silver. And argeria is a skin condition caused by ingesting silver, drinking silver, eating it. It causes your skin to turn blue. The symbol for lead is PV, which is derived from the Latin word plumbum, which means plumbing. Plumbing in ancient Rome was carried out through lead pipes, and it's speculated that the lead actually contaminated the water, poisoning its residents and causing the fall of the Roman Empire. A compound called lead acetate, or lead of sugar, was used as a substitute for sugar because it tastes sweet. 
Lead was also used as an additive in paint, and children would peel at the paint, put it in their mouths, and eat it because it tastes like candy, it tastes sweet. However, lead causes brain damage, and this would actually cause a lot of neurological disorders in young children. Plata. O plomo. Blato Plomo is a saying credited to Pablo Escobar, Colombia's most notorious drug lord. It wasn't really a question at all. He's not asking silver or lead. He's basically issuing a threat. You either take this money, or I'll give you some lead. Psss. Lead bullets. The symbol for mercury is HG, which is derived from hydro, which we learn are ready for hydrogen, and argentum, which you learn for silver. So when you put the two words together, hydro argentum, you get liquid silver, because that's what mercury is at room temperature. It's a liquid metal. The phrase mad as a hatter comes from the fact that hat makers used to work in close proximity with mercury, which was involved in the hat making process. Mercury gives off really toxic fumes, and breathing it in causes neurological disorders. You can also remember it like this. AU. Get off my gold chain. Thanks for watching my lesson on elements etymology. I've given you a breakdown on some of the more common elements concerning their names, symbols, histories, origins, folklore. Now it's up to you to fill in the rest of the notes and have this submitted alongside an ID photo somewhere in the picture of the work you'll submit online. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.